Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a beautiful day here in Houston, Texas. I'm back in the United States of America. I'm here as a quick stop in Houston before I head to Las Vegas to go to SEMA. Now, while I might not have my GT500 with me, that's over in Miami. I'm only here for a quick trip, so it wasn't worth sending it across the country this time around. But we are going to be rather spoilt with some very nice cars today because I'm meeting up with my friend Yellow, who has a few very spectacular McLarens, which are actually stored here at the moment. And we're going to be able to go and take a look around as well, of course, as the elephant in the room right behind me, the Pagani Zonda F, a car that I've actually filmed before over in Europe. We'll take a look at this as well. But inside, there are multiple speed tails, Sabres, Senna's, P1, Elva. It is a spectacular lineup. We're going to head inside though and go and take a look. First things first, we need to take a quick look at this, but we will head inside in just a second. The Pagani Zonda F one of 25 F coupes. You have that 7.3 litre naturally aspirated V12, the manual gearbox, and this particular color scheme is stunning. The metallic red paintwork glistening in the sunshine with the gold wheels. It is one of the very few cars in the yellow collection to not actually be yellow. Most of the cars inside, as you will see shortly, have a bit of a yellow theme and a lot of carbon fiber going on. But this is here as part of the Raduno that's actually been here, the Pagani rally effectively for the owners here in Texas over the last couple of days. There have been a fair few Huayras around and a couple of Zondas. But remember, these are very, very rare on US soil. So pretty cool to be able to see that. Now, as I said, I'm out here for a whistle stop visit here in Texas. I'm going to be flying on very quickly over to Vegas to go and attend SEMA as part of this, I suppose, whirlwind adventure to the US. But for the time being, we need to head inside here at McLaren Houston. My first time popping to visit part of the Indigo Auto Group. You've got Porsche and Lamborghini alongside as well, because there's a lot to see and it's really quite special. So let's do this. Let's head inside. Inside the showroom then, here at McLaren Houston, we have some very nice cars to take a look at. This is actually the 720S Spider in the new Volcano Blue, which looks stunning. We have a 765 LT Coupe in Chicane Effect, it's called. This is actually a new color to me. It's like Chicane Gray from the 675 LT, but with the metallic sparkle. So that must look amazing out in the sunshine here in Texas. We've also got the 720 in the regular Chicane Gray. That's a spider, and we've got the coupe over here in Lantana Purple, which is a color I actually looked at when I specced my 675 LT Spider before choosing to make my own color. But what we have come to see is what is right through this shutter. Feast your eyes on the view that we're about to be presented with. Yes, you are seeing this correctly. I'm going to put the shutter down behind me. But this is really quite the display of McLaren hypercars. There is a customer delivery Elva yet to be handed over, hence why it's under the cover. But then we have the cars from the yellow collection, the Senna GTR, the P1, the Speedtail. There is another Speedtail, which belongs to the dealership. We have another Sabre, the yellow Sabre. And then we have the Senna 720, 570S GT4, 675LT GT, and a 720S here as well. But feast your eyes over this. We have two of the 106 Speedtails. We have two of the 15 Sabres, two of which I have been lucky enough to drive before. And we also have the P1 with the full carbon fiber body, one of the Senna GTRs. This is really quite the display and truly awesome to be able to see. A huge thanks to McLaren Houston and to Yellow for the opportunity to pop down and take a look. The Senna GTR, just imagine that thing out on a racetrack. One of 75 cars, a little bit more power than the regular road going Senna, but even more aero. This front splitter with all of the aggression, the flicks, the canards, that massive spoiler. And this particular car, by the way, is one of very few, which is actually painted. Now, most of the Senna GTRs from factory were in fact wrapped effectively, vinyl, depending on the different liveries. But this is painted in the yellow with the green accents that you can see around. And check this out. As you come towards the rear, the center section is actually a navy blue. The reason for all of this is to match the colors of Senna's helmet. And this is actually painted under the clear coat, under the lacquer. You can't feel the transition of that paint at all but the yellow, the green, and the blue, the colors being matched perfectly on the Senna GTR. A very, very special car. Look at that diffuser. 
look at how aggressive this is and you know when these things go out to racetracks they absolutely decimate lap times this much power this little weight effectively the ultimate hypercar track toy you could say then we have these two p1 number 137 which matches the yellow Senna, which isn't here at the moment, but that's the Senna from the collection, also number 137. This in the full carbon, because it was originally volcano yellow, the colour that you now have for all of the pinstripes and accents that you find all around it. But some cars, for the few customers who were able to do so, went back to MSO, to the factory in Woking in the UK, to have an entirely new body, the full exposed carbon fibre weave, as you can see, over the whole top of this. And in this case, with those extra details to keep it on theme, with the other cars in the collection, even inside, you've got the yellow headrest embroideries, the yellow seat belts, but all of those magnificent details around the exterior. With the Akibono brakes, I remember when the car was launched with that level of stopping power. This is sitting in the normal mode at the moment. Obviously, you can put it in race where it goes lower and the gigantic spoiler pops up out from the back and this all lifts up. But obviously, this was the first of McLaren's Ultimate Series cars, the first of the modern era of McLaren Automotive making a hypercar. In some ways, the follow-on, of course, to the F1 in name and in really what it represented at the time. Although, in configuration, the Speedtail has very much taken that honour. One of the 106, 106 chosen, as it's the exact same number as the original McLaren F1s of all different derivatives. So of the original F1s, there were 106 cars, if you include road cars, race cars, prototypes, and everything all-inclusive. We've again got the full carbon fibre body done exactly to match with the P1. This is number 44 as it happens, which is quite a cool number. Some of you might be able to work out the significance of that. And the associated McLaren F1 number 44, which belongs to one very famous racing driver, Mr. Lewis Hamilton. Anyway, this is part of the yellow collection. You've got the aero covers over the wheels. McLaren's, well, fastest car, top speed, very, very high. And in this case, with the optional roof snorkel as well, you can have the car with this or without it. If you don't have the snorkel, it has the intake more over the rear deck. But the speed tail with this very, very long rear end, all about slippery aerodynamics, all about being as efficient as possible through the air and with that, three seat configuration, the yellow in the center really to mark the driver's zone and some of the yellow touches you have across the dashboard as well. But not just one speed tail here, but the second as well. And this particular car, by the way, is finished with what's called the 1K carbon fiber. Look at this visual carbon and look at how intricate and small the weave is, that detail. You almost don't notice that it's visual carbon fibre until you're right up alongside it. And then the colour contrast between the navy blue and the bronze wheels and bronze pinstripe details around the side skirts and the splitter, and then also on the interior of it, are absolutely stunning. This is a beautiful car in particular. And as I said, this doesn't have the snorkel over the top, so you can see the different layout that you get on the rear deck. But when I drove the Speedtail, I was fascinated by how much it is a hyper Grand Tourer, how comfortable it is to drive and how natural it feels to be sat in the very centre. And I would quite like to show you the interior, so we might grab some keys quite shortly. You have things like the cameras here that pop out from the sides that you view through those displays either side of the dashboard. But yes, that is just plain cool. So the Elva, which is of course the open top Barquetta, no windscreen, completely open, latest member of the Ultimate Series family, of which there'll be 149. Senna GTR, P1, Speedtail, Speedtail, and then we get to the two Sabres. Now, out of the 15, we have car number 11, we have car number 6, and I have seen a couple of these before now. I've been able to drive the blue car with my friends at the Triple F collection, and also when I went out with my friend Mike uh, with his friend's car in the flip paint colour, the colour stream paint, which was striking. But you've got two different examples of specifications here. All of the cars are different. Every one is actually unique. But effectively, they made this very bespoke car commissioned for the US market. So a few specific details about it that you can only have for the USA. You couldn't have, for example, over in Europe. And to pinpoint some of those, this much sharper front end, the radius of the different elements that you have. They have to be much smoother for a European spec car, as we'll see on the center in a moment. Things like the much smaller door mirrors as well, although they are peculiar because they aren't actually electric. You have to manually adjust the Sabre's door mirrors. And just a few things about it, obviously, that are quite different, but it is the fastest non-hybrid two-seat McLaren ever with a top speed of 218 miles per hour from the 835 horsepower 
4 litre twin turbocharged V8. The yellow car, of course, very much fitting in with the rest of the cars from the theme, but for the Sabre McLaren created, or MSO created, because it is effectively a bespoke commission through them, this dual colour scheme. Some cars of which have it this way, with the carbon over the arches and the body colour in the centre. Some have it the other way, with carbon in the centre and colour over the arches. Obviously, every car having the opportunity to effectively be configured with the manufacturer directly to make them all totally their own, whatever it might have been. There was one effective fixed price, including anything in terms of paintwork, artworks, liveries, and different finishes. And again, huge diffuser, active flaps, in fact, down here. These are these actively lower at speed to keep the car a little bit more planted. And a wing that you kind of get a feel was inspired by the wing on the Senna GTR when you're looking at it as well. More, let's say, Le Mans-esque. And in many ways, you could argue this is what the Senna should perhaps have been when it was originally introduced, one of the 500 of which we have right here. And you can see exactly what I was saying with the much more curved front splitter, for example, which obviously is slightly less efficient for the aerodynamics, but slightly safer, let's say, for European regulations. The Senna actually has this removable front piece. If you should damage or crack it, you can just change the front instead of having to change the whole thing. But lots of active aero with those bright orange flaps that you can see on this car against the blue paintwork. And you can kind of see how the Senna evolved into the Sabre as part of that commission, that bespoke project. And I do actually quite like this. These wheels have almost this liquid silver effect to them. And this car has the completely transparent door window glass as well. For my Senna, I actually have that fairly heavily tinted. And I quite like it with the completely transparent windows. Maybe it's something I should think about changing on mine because it was one of the unique elements of the Senna when it was initially introduced. In addition to the McLaren Ultimate Series cars though, we also have the yellow or volcano yellow, we could say, 720S Coupe. We have a 570S GT4, which is McLaren's in-house race car, race series program that they offered. We have the Delta Red 675 LT Coupe, one of the 500 LT Coupes. When they were actually originally introduced, I considered Delta Red as one of the options. It was one of the standard, I think, five colors that were available for the car before I went for the, I guess, now famous MSO Cerulean Blue. We have a McLaren GT. Haven't spent too much time in the McLaren GT. Don't see that many of them around. We have another 720S here as well. But it has to be said, that is quite the lineup to behold and take in. So let me can see, go and see what we can do regarding some keys to take a slightly better look at some of these. We can take a better look at this then because I happen to have the key for it now, which is a very nice piece. You have the Speedtail logo on the rear. And then from the key, if you haven't seen this before, it is quite spectacular to behold because when you press and hold the unlock button, it then uses the electric motors to open up the doors and give you this magnificent effect in the process. And the interior of this is a masterpiece, as is just looking at the car with those dihedral doors fully opened up, hinged from almost in the center of the carbon fiber cage that sits all around the occupants. And then with that three seat configuration, central driving position and just look inside here this particular car actually is quite unique it has this nubuck leather which is effectively more traditional it is super super soft and then for the central seat you have the blue alcantara the navy to match with the exterior you have the designation plaque sitting behind as well and then look at the dashboard those triple displays on the central panel where you have the graphics at the moment all linking towards the center and then the screens as well for the cameras sitting either side, but with all of the illumination and all of the different effects. For example, as you can see across the dashboard to just make it feel very special. I can tell you the smell of this car is very, very nice as well. That new car feeling. You've got the control panel up on the roof, which is where you can control the active dynamics and put it into the different driving modes, the different settings, depending exactly how you'd like to have it into velocity, for example. But this is, well, the iconic and legendary McLaren seating position right off the F1, that central position with the other two seats sitting just slightly back behind, but even down to the speaker grills, which act also as places to rest your feet down there in the footwells as well. And you've got these storage pouches that sit just underneath each seat, as well as having boots both at the rear and at the front as it happens. But when you see a speed tail opened up like this and being able to control it from the key. You can also close them. Again, same press of the lock button 
and the doors will close back down. You can see the mirrors are popped out at the moment as well. And they actually do that surprisingly quietly. Now it locks up, got a blink of the amber lights as well. This McLaren speed mark shape that you have, that almost tick off the end and the logo mimicked through the shape of the headlights as well. And we've got the McLaren CTEC smart chargers for all of the cars here as well at the moment. But that is a very, very magnificent thing to actually take a look at in a little bit more detail. I really, really like the smart color scheme. That very light bronze, you have that very silvery bronze for those pinstripe details that run around. And if you have a look under here, you can actually see how the exhaust pipes work as well. Look at all of this. Look at the diffuser that runs right under, all to do with the aero, and how slippery the car is through the air, but inside of the wheels, right down there, all carbon fiber, of course, as well. And even the 1K weave that you have on the black carbon also here. And don't forget too, that you have these flex carbon flaps here. These actually bend up to give the car a little bit more downforce at the rear to keep it a little bit more planted. I could spend a lot of time studying the McLaren Speedtail. Another detail I'd like to show you as well is have a look here. You've got the number 11 on this car in the carbon weave, pinstriped around with the silver to match with the paint over the top. But in this car, the yellow car, have a look at this. The way the carbon is done, number 23, lucky number for the collection. Look at the way that you have that opposing weave in the visible layer on the top. A very, very nice detail that I think McLaren have done for the first time with the Sabres. So yes, safe to say, this is a pretty special place to have come to visit today. What do we have? Eight McLaren Ultimate Series. You could say hypercars. We had this discussion back and forth with the Senna, but certainly the others are all hypercars when you consider price tags and exclusivities. Yeah, very, very special to see. <laughs> Sounds good. It is time for the Zonda F to head on out. This car in the Texas looks and sounds truly exceptional. So wide at the tail end. I think the F is really the sweet spot of Zondas for me. Not overly complicated, but with a bit of sportiness from that spoiler that runs across the full rear. This car has the scoops over the sides as well, the intakes for the cooling, just all around. Such a lovely thing. So nice. Let's see if we get a nice sound heading up the road now. Lift up, of course, for the driveway. What a glorious thing. Magnificent. Well, that is more or less it then for today here at McLaren Houston. And what a display that has been. A huge thanks to the team here for being so hospitable. A huge thanks as well to my friend Yellow for coming along with the Pagani Zonda F to top it off. What a start to being back in the USA. And yes, I would love to be out in my Shelby GT500. That will have to wait again until later in the year before eventually it comes back to the UK. For now, we might get up to one or two more things here in Texas, but otherwise heading onwards towards Las Vegas to this year's SEMA show and quite a lot of things in store to experience and see up there. For now though, thank you very much for watching. As always guys, your support is hugely appreciated. Do check out these guys. The links are all down below. But that is it for this time and I'll see you again very, very soon. Cheers.